uh, it really says nothing about the Big Bang itself. Uh, it is very literally a theory of the aftermath of the Bang. Uh, the Bang itself happened before the theory starts to describe the universe. Uh, so the theory tells us nothing about what banged, why it banged, or what happened before it banged. Uh, it starts with all the matter already in place, uh, and already expanding, and already uniform, uh, and all the matter already existing. That's, I guess, my next point here. Where did the matter come from? Uh, the conventional Big Bang theory says nothing about where the matter came from. Uh, all the matter is assumed to have been in place uh, from the very beginning. Uh, so that in the conventional Big Bang theory, uh, for every particle that exists in the universe today, maybe that particle wasn't there at the beginning, but there was at least a precursor particle which eventually became that particle. Uh, so all the matter is already in place uh, right from the beginning. Now you might think that you'd have to assume that. After all, laws of physics can't really make matter out of nothing. Uh, we'll come back to that. It turns out that inflation does provide a, a possible answer uh, to these questions, uh, which really is consistent with the laws of physics. And We'll explain why. So let me now talk about cosmic inflation. But maybe I should stop and ask if there are any questions about what I said so far. Mm -hmm. No? Okay. Okay, so now I want to describe this inflationary twist on the Big Bang. Um, so inflation is a modification of the standard Big Bang theory. Uh, and mm -hmm. Hollywood has given us a nice word for how it fits in with the <laughs> standard Big Bang theory. Uh, inflation is the prequel. Uh, inflation describes a story about events that are, we believe occurred uh, which lead to the initial conditions for the conventional uh, Big Bang Theory, which then takes over. Uh, so inflation explains the bang of the Big Bang in the sense that it explains the outward propulsion. Um, now, I like to say that inflation is based on, on two miracles of physics. Uh, and uh, obviously, since I'm a physicist, I don't really believe in supernatural things, so when I talk about miracles, I'm not talking about anything that's supernatural. Uh, but uh, there are some features of physics uh, which seem to be are very surprising and very contrary to what we probably all learned in high school, uh, and rather amazing in terms of their consequences. Uh, so I think the word miracle is pretty appropriate. So the first miracle, uh, which is the secret that inflation uses to explain the propulsion behind the Big Bang, Push the right button here. Uh, miracle of physics number one coming up. Uh, gravitational repulsion. Uh, in spite of the fact that we all learned Newton's laws of gravity when we were in high school, which says that gravity always attracts. You have two masses that attract each other. Uh, gravity actually can act repulsively. Uh, and this is a feature of Einstein's general theory of relativity. Uh, it's a feature which, in fact, Einstein uh, tried to make use of right from the very beginning. Uh, you might recall that when Einstein first invented general relativity, uh, he applied it to the universe as a whole uh, and discovered that the universe would collapse because everything attracts everything else. Mm -hmm. And Einstein, at the time, was convinced that the universe was static. The masses were just staying there. Uh, and they couldn't do that if you just had ordinary gravity. Uh, so he added an extra term to his equations, which he called the cosmological constant, uh, from the modern point of view, that extra term corresponds to assigning a non-zero energy density to empty space, to the vacuum, uh, and that results in gravitational repulsion, and that's what Einstein made use of, uh, and he wanted to adjust this cosmological constant to have just the right value to be able to suspend the universe so that ordinary gravity would not cause it to collapse. Uh, so inflation takes advantage of the same effect, um, uh, the combination of general relativity and modern particle physics uh, predicts that at very high energies there should exist forms of matter which act like this cosmological constant uh, and create a gravitational repulsion. And that is the uh, secret, so to speak, behind inflation. Uh, it, there really is a mechanism that we know of in physics uh, which can cause gravity to act repulsively, and that's exactly what you'd like to have uh, to give yourself an explanation for how the universe got into this period of enormous expansion. Uh, technical note here about how that works. Uh, let me just, I'll, I'll say it. If you don't understand it, the, the technical note means nothing else in the talk will depend on this. If you <laughs> just ignore it if you like. Uh, but uh, according to general relativity, uh, a repulsive gravitational field is produced by a material uh, which has a negative pressure. And a negative pressure is just like a positive pressure, but with the opposite sign, as you might guess. Uh, and there really are states that physical theories can describe that produce a, a literally a negative pressure. 
Uh, and in particular, modern particle physics predicts that at very high energies we expect to find substates. Uh, and in particular, uh, the most common kind of state in our theories that uh, produces this effect uh, is a state where, which is dominated, where the energy is dominated by the potential energy uh, of something called a scalar field. Um, but that's an aside. You don't need to know that. Uh, what, you do sh what you should know is that inflation proposes that a patch of this repulsive gravity material uh, existed in the early universe. Uh, and uh, how big that patch had to be depends on assumptions that you can make different choices about. Uh, the energy scale at which inflation happened is still really unknown. There's a wide range of possibilities, all of which work as far as we can tell. Uh, so what is probably the most likely <laughs> energy scale, which therefore I will use for my examples, is the scale of these grand unified theories that I told you about in my introduction there, uh, which is typically something like 10 to the 16 billion electron volts, GeV. And if that's the scale at which inflation happened, uh, this initial patch of repulsive gravity material uh, only has to be as big as about 10 to the minus 28 centimeters uh, for this to work. Uh, and once, once you have such a patch, it's fantastically enlarged by inflation, uh, and that means that the initial density of these patches can be incredibly low, uh, and actually the probability of, of finding these patches can also be incredibly low. As long as there's some non-zero chance of finding one, uh, that's all you really need. And once it forms, it literally just takes over the universe um, and uh, expands exponentially, tremendously. Uh, the uh, gravitational repulsion created by this material then becomes the driving force behind the Big Bang. My laser pointer is giving out here. Um, I have another one. Let me uh, switch laser pointer first. <laughs> Okay, so this you can see, right? Okay, so, uh, and the point is that the, once you have this gravitational repulsion, it drives the universe into a period of exponential expansion, uh, meaning it doubles in size in a certain amount of time, and then doubles again, and then doubles again. And the doubling time is only about 10 to the minus 37 seconds, uh, ridiculously short. So this all happens unbelievably quickly. And these fantastic numbers all come about as a consequence of these grand unified theories. That's, that's where the first fantastic number comes from, and then all the other fantastic numbers are derived from that first fantastic number. Uh, so the patch starts exponentially expanding, and in order to make the theory work, in order to get a universe that's as big as what we observe, uh, it has to exponentially expand by a factor of at least 10 to the 28, uh, which corresponds to about... Uh, about 100 doublings. It's 65 time constants. If you, the time constant is the amount by it, of time needed to expand by a factor of this mathematical number called little e, which is 2.718, something like uh, that. But you can also measure it in doubling times. And the, the, it's about 100 doubling times is what's needed. Uh, it could have expanded, however, by much more. There's no limit to how much inflation you can tolerate and still have a universe that's consistent with what we observe. Uh, as it inflates more and more, uh, the universe just gets bigger and bigger, uh, but it extends just beyond what we can see. So the part we do see uh, looks the same uh, if you have this much inflation or more. Uh, the inflation can end very quickly. Uh, to get the minimal amount of inflation, you only need for the inflation to occur for about 10 to the minus 35 seconds. Uh, and at the end of that time, the universe is not as big as what we see now. It, it's still only as big as a, about a marble size, about a centimeter across. Uh, but that's big enough at those high energies so that if it just coasts from then on, by the time it cools to the way we see it now, it's expanded enough to become uh, from the size of the marble to the size of the observable universe. Excuse me. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm just confused. Yeah. You said in the beginning that the original Big Bang Theory... Yeah. said that the universe started like a snag and you said that's not how it happened. It was, right. Everything was uniform, but now you're saying... Now I'm saying it started with the marble. Yeah. <laughs> Why is a marble different from an egg?